Greetings, friends. Lost PLA is harder than I thought. Let's give it another shot. So in my last video I tried Lost PLA casting a mug. It did not work for many reasons, but the mold making part of it, that did work. The burnout, not so much. Uh, the, the casting, not so much. But the mold making, so we started on the right foot. So I'm going to show you how I prepared that mold. It did work, and I'm going to use a different uh, 3D print. I printed on my printer here, not this, although that will come into play eventually. I printed this first, after the, the failure, and I thought, oh sweet! It's a turbocharger, that'll be awesome, but it has some of the same problems as the mug. You can see here, like, this would be, this pipe sticking out in this flange, that would be difficult to burn out. And since the impeller in here is just, like, for, for looks, this would actually be, like, one thick lump, and then another thick lump connected by a thin spot, and that wouldn't solidify in a nice, predictable manner, and that would end with a lot of problems when the casting came, because in real life, these aren't cast all in one giant lump. They're, like, pieces, and they're hollow. And then I thought, I was watching Game of Thrones, oh, I know, I'll do a door stopper. Uh, the problem with this door stopper, see, also varying thickness. I have a good idea how I would sand cast this, and also how I could do runners and stuff. Uh, but to do it best with Lost PLA, I think you would have to do it vertically, and I don't have enough space. So, door stops out too. There's a cat there. He wasn't happy about that. And then I printed this. This unhappy looking gentleman is supposed to be a bust of Jon Snow. He's a main character in Game of Thrones, I don't know if you've seen him, and it has a couple of, my, my daughter grabbed some some markers and was markering his hair. Anyways, there's a couple of great features with this. For one, all the hair, I'll put a link in the description, this fur thing, you get a lot of detail there. Also, if you can notice, it's like a big lump, a single mass. The thickest part is probably here, like his head, you know, thick head, not not in reference to the character, although, you know, maybe maybe a bit. And I'm pretty sure if I burn it out vertically, a lot of the junk will just flow right out the bottom. It, it won't get trapped, really, uh, except maybe his chin here. And, you know, we can always paper mache on some beard hair if that doesn't turn out right in the final casting. But this should make the burnout much easier. Also, look at all the cool detail. I mean, really, like the hair. Also, any 3D printing nerds watching, uh, I printed this. I was able to reduce the distance between the support material and the print, and I could get better looking uh, overhangs. I still have some not so great looking overhangs, like this part right here, his chin. There's two main things that I'm gonna do to this. First off, it doesn't have an in gate. I wanna cast it like this, so gravity pulls the metal in. But this isn't going to be the top. There's the top of the plaster will be like up here, which means I need an in gate, and that's why I printed that. Eh, eh, eh. There we go. This is just a cylinder, inch and a half by two inches, and I've been making these. Ah, ah, butterfingers, making these for other projects that I'm working on. Um, I'm not making a video of that, so you'll have to see that when it's done, if it ever gets done. And I'm going to stick this on the bottom like that. Now this is a lot bigger than this, and there's a reason for that. I'm going to be pouring it in such that air can escape around it and go out. There isn't really any complex part of this that needs special venting, I think, uh, but this is my final defense against that. When this is on top, if this finally fills up and it's full of aluminum, this is going to be a lot of weight, a huge mass. This will obviously solidify last, and that pressure will be pushing down, making the air buoyant want to rise up. So hopefully that'll help purge some of the bubbles. Some some little bubbles I don't really care about. The bubbles can make it up into this at least before they solidify. And then maybe I'll take the grinder and just chop off like the top few inches of this and I'll end up with a nice little base to kind of balance them on. Because he, he stands, you know, he stands there. But I'm afraid if it's aluminum it's going to be a little more fally overy. The second thing I need to do... This is not waterproof. I'm gonna sink it in Plaster of Paris. Plaster of Paris is stuff in water. And if water can get inside, I'm afraid Plaster of Paris will get inside and then solidify inside. And when I do the burnout, the Plaster of Paris will stay in there and screw everything up. I know this is not waterproof because the cup I did uh, before I cast it, before I failed casting it, I tried filling it with water. It leaked. So what I did with that is I sealed it with this. This is wax. Now you might think you can do lost wax casting with this. This is beeswax, coconut, and beeswax blend. This is the wrong kind of wax. 
It was the right kind of wax, wrong kind of wax. Didn't know this was the wrong kind of wax until I got home. Uh, however, it's very soft at room temperature, and I like that because I can take chunks of it, like this, with my finger, smear it all over the place. Now there is a way to make your 3D prints waterproof in your settings and all that. Uh, I haven't done that. So mine are not waterproof. This is my last little attempt at making this not get any plaster inside. There were way too many pauses in that sentence. And now I'm going to do a long laborious task where I cover this entire thing with wax. And this kind of wax, if you rub it eventually, it'll go away. You won't be able to see it anymore. And that's because you push the wax into the little cavities between the layers. Especially important where there's an overhang, like the chin. If you rub enough, you can even get all the detail back from the print. And bonus, the coconut oil makes your hands lovely and smooth. There you see, already the wax is kind of disappearing. It's, it's sinking into the pores. I gotta do all the rest of this, but uh, I'll, I'll worry about that later. He has the scar on his face. I think a crow bit him in the face. That was many seasons ago, though. So there, I've sufficiently rubbed this guy's face, hair, and shoulders in oil. And now it's time to stick this on. Uh, this was printed in vase mode. I have discovered that my vase mode prints are watertight. The cup was not vase mode. That was, like, thick and junk and that that leaked in like three minutes I'm going to stick this on top of here like so with more wax so there layer of wax kind of like mortar these are kind of like bricks and I squish mm, squish them together and you end up with a little bit of squeeze out there in the base and kind of smear it up around so you get a nice smooth transition and this is all I did to attach the sprue this gigantic sprue uh, out, that's all I did for the, the cup, and it worked. It did not come out and fail on me. The rest of the process failed on me. But details. Boom. Ready to go. There's got to be some great joke here about how this guy is going to be put in a furnace. If you watch the show, maybe not. I might be stretching. It is a very nice 3D print, though, I gotta say. Nice model. Don't know if it totally looks like the dude in the show. But, hey, someone made this on a computer, and it was free. I shouldn't complain. He might complain though, as soon as the flames hit him. Now we have two buckets of plaster of Paris. This is how I get them from this company, and they come in this plastic tub, which works good as anything for uh, making the molds. They generally have more than these in there, uh, but I'm going to use this one, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dump some of it. Oh, it's going everywhere. I'm going to dump some of it out. This is a tip given to me by the guy who runs uh, Chirpy's Tinkering's YouTube channel. He's a friend of mine, and he has yet to give me bad advice. There. So I'm going to fill the rest of this, not like to the top, but a decent amount, with play sand. The idea is this increases permeability, so when I burn it out, we can get more of the water out of there. It'll also hold it to be together a little bit better when I dump 1500 degree aluminum in there. This is just play sand from the store. I meant to use some of this to uh, make my own casting sand, but I just haven't gotten around to it. There, now this, this might seem like it's a bit too high, but when you mix in water, everything's going to compress a bit because there's a lot of loose air, in, especially in the plaster. And a lot of the plaster is going to filter in between the sand grains. So there, there's a lot of sand in there. Now I need to put in some water and get mixing. I, I don't have water. Hooray for planning. Be right back. Okay, so this creates a bit of a problem. Once the water hits, I got like a couple minutes where I got to get everything wet and then I got to get the mold in there uh, and hold it in position with something that I'll figure out at the time. So it might help for me to pre-mix this. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try to use this dowel here. I have a less stupid idea. Well, that's a workout that rivals the shake weight. There, slightly better. And it's all fluffed up. Like I said, add water, the level will drop a little bit. Stick the 3D print in there, this level will go up because of displacement of stuff and fluids and science and other words that make me feel smart. I'm going to get the print. Here is the print. The guy is ready to die. What you didn't see off camera was I hit it with a toothbrush to kind of get all the little junk out of the... Well, didn't get it all out. I didn't use my normal toothbrush, so don't worry. I used like a spare. What I'm going to do 
is get the water in, mix it up really, really good, stick this in upside down. The cup had a problem because it would have been like a hollow air pocket. So I had to do some other jazz that I'm really glad I didn't film. Put something on top to hold it down and in place. And then let it solidify. It'll solidify pretty quickly, but I'm going to let it wait a while. Unlike last time, I'm going to find the thing to hold it down before I pour the water. See? I learn. Here we go. I'll stick this in, I'll put this on top of that, and then I'll shove a crucible on top to hold it all down. There. Plans. We have a plan, people. Alrighty. Are we ready? I'm not feeling ready. But I took my wedding ring off, so it's time. Time to get dirty. Alright, this like effectively starts the clock at T minus like six minutes or something. That powder, that's just powder. That's not smoke. Don't be alarmed. Although, you should always be careful using plaster of Paris because plaster of Paris can have an exothermic reaction. I mentioned this last time, but I'm definitely going to mention it every time I show it. Uh, do not Google plaster of Paris burns because you will see things that you cannot unsee. It's very, very dangerous. There are people who have stuck their hands in Plaster of Paris thinking they'll get a hand mold, but really what they got was amputated fingers because of third degree burns and such. So uh, yeah, fire, fire is dangerous. We all know fire is dangerous. Plaster, you might not think it's super dangerous, but it will still burn you. So be careful. Oh, that's squidgy. Still not convinced I'm getting everything down at the bottom. I recall this taking, eh, screw it. I'll just use my fingers. Again, plaster of Paris can burn your fingers. Be careful. It won't burn your fingers in the first 10 seconds, though. The burning of the fingers was more of an after it solidified kind of thing. That's when that happened. That's why it was so dangerous, because the person in question that you will see if you Google, which I do not recommend, that person stuck their hands in and waited, and the thing solidified, and uh, it, it, was not, it was not cool. It was not a good thing to have happen. Okay, there. That's been like two minutes of mixing. Ah, so much crap on my hands. So now we tip our brave chump upside down, stick him down into the plaster. Uh, actually, that's that's gonna work just fine. Positioned thusly, stick this board over the top and stick a crucible on that because it's quite buoyant in there. Yes, yes, that will do nicely. Now, allow to dry. And I mean like, wait a day before you touch it again.